Good morning, Zion Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. It is time for our morning worship. Would you stand for our call to worship, please? For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Dear Father, we welcome you this morning into this house. And we ask that you make your presence known to each and every one of us, Father. Touch our hearts in a special way the way that acknowledges the true nature of this season, Father, this season of celebration, the season that gives the honor and praise to your son, Jesus. Father, as a reminder of this season, his birth and his sacrifice, his death and what, we mean, and what it means to us as the children and partakers of the good news. Father, thank you. We are without our leader this morning, Father, and we ask for mercy and grace for and travel for our pastor and his family, and that he be returned to us in good order. Father, we pray also for the safety and joyous holiday to all of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, by way of uh, announcements this morning, I wanted to remind you of our fifth anniversary meeting on January the 11th, Tuesday at 6 uh, p.m., and that will be by way of Zoom. So those of you who have volunteered, I ask you to uh, put that on your calendars. Uh, another significant development I learned about this morning is that Sister Minnie Hughes is in the hospital and that she's in critical conditions and we're asking for your prayers and for any demonstration of love that you can carry this holiday season to her. You know, she has been one of the patri matriarchs of this church with a patronym of mother, the endearment of a mother to us all. And I think, uh, Sister Alberta, do you have a report? Could you please uh, give us a status of Sister Hughes? you for your prayers for Sister Hughes. At this time, uh, I'd like to read a couple of cards that were given to me uh, to the Zion Church family. Here's a special wish that this season is your best one yet. Happy holiday. Thank you for your prayers and support. And that comes from uh, Trustee Kenny Enzar. Wishing you old fashioned pleasures, happy memories, and all the joys of the season. Thanks for everything, Willie Faye Whitley. And she also included a token of her appreciation. So we thank you, each and every one of you who uh, has Zion Memorial in your mind during this, this holidays. And continue to be reminded of the seriousness of these holidays and what they really mean. This morning, uh, as I said in my prayer, our pastor is not with us, but we have uh, a distinguished gentleman whom I've known for many years and who is very dear to the Grace family because of the support that he's given us over the years. And anybody that knows this man knows without a doubt that he's a man of God. So by way of introduction of Glenn, Reverend Glenn Pettiport, 
born in Durham, North Carolina, the son of Mr. and Mrs. McNeil Pettiford. Glenn's home church is the Mount Gilead Baptist Church of Durham. He is a graduate of Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. His seminary work has been done in the School of Theology at Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Presently, he is an assistant minister at First Baptist Church on North Highland Avenue. Prior to the present time, Reverend Pettiford served as pastor of the First Baptist Church of Lexington, North Carolina. Before the pastor, he was chaplain of the Forsyth Prison Chaplaincy, and now is the, the prison ministry. So after our song, and I'll take it, turn it over now to our minister of music, uh, April Spears. Uh, the voice you'll be hearing is that of Dr. Glenn Pettiford. I gave him the designation. <laughs> Oh, Sophia, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to overlook you, Valerie. Good morning. So I'll be reading the poem Towards the Night Before Christmas. Um, a Visit from Christ by Andrew Mosteda. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the earth, every creature was staring, awaiting a birth. The time for Messiah was certainly near. The prophets foretold it. The Bible was clear. Yeah, you can use your mic, please. Pull your mask out so we can hear you. From the book, from the book of beginning, the very first sin, God's word made it clear how His grace entered in. Born, born of a virgin, He'd come as a man, the Creator among us. That, the, among us, the time was at hand. Stars were arranged to show marvelous things, setting wise men to journey and find the true king. Shepherds in Bethlehem gazed on the sky, longing to see him, their Lord, on the side. How could they know the very next night an angel of God would speak words of delight? How the Savior was born, it was, it was news of great joy. In a cloth and a manger, they find the dear boy. And a heavenly host was soon joined to sing of of the glory of God and, and of wonderful things. He entered creation, set position aside to show us how deeply his love did abide. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Let's reward our, our youth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. <laughs> to God be the glory. Excellent job.
church let us stand if we are able for the reading of the scripture scripture today is in the second chapter of the gospel of Luke beginning with verse 1 reading to verse 10 I will be reading from the new revised standard translation in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Would you bow with me in prayer? Lord, I join Zion Memorial in praying for Reverend Cain and his family as they travel. May your traveling mercies be with them. And Father, I pray that these, your people here and here by way of technology, receive a blessing and Lord, help the preacher that he not block the blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to say to you this morning that I'm glad to be here. I am so delighted and happy that your pastor asked me to come and to do this today. He is a kind man, uh, and I do hope that if you are disappointed that you looked up and didn't see him but saw me instead, that you don't take it out on him. <laughs> and remember, be nice to the substitute. Zion Memorial, you hold a dear place in my heart for many reasons, and I shall not go through all of the years I've been here in Winston-Salem. Uh, but I will say that one of the first friends I made in Winston-Salem was the late Reverend Gill. And it, it has kept on going since then. The Grace family is part of us at First Baptist, as well as being 
here at Zion Memorial. And so I am delighted to be sharing the pulpit this morning with Brother Grace. almost said daddy grace <laughs> I thank you brother speaks for meeting me at the door being so hospitable as well as others who have assisted me you know when you go somewhere and you don't know where the room is not that room but the other room <laughs> you need some help <laughs> and I thank you for all of that Our sermon topic today is the night and day of Christmas. Our scripture comes from the second chapter of Luke. The verses that we read that concluded with what the angel said. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Brothers and sisters, we may not be of the world, but we live in the world. The distinction between followers of Christ and the rest of the world at this time of year is that we appreciate the coming of the Son of God into human existence. The incarnation means something to us. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, Christmas does belong to Christians, but it also belongs to the world. Everywhere you go, you see celebrations or sign of celebration at this time of year. The distinction that we have is not that we don't do any of those things, but the distinction we have, I heard it when the young people came up with their pieces. The distinction that we have is the night before Christmas has to do with what we read in the second chapter of Luke. The night before Christmas for us is not what the night before Christmas is for those who do not celebrate and appreciate the coming of God to man by way of the Son of God being born. We treasure this story in our hearts. Mary, the mother of our Lord, not only treasured it, but when we read on throughout Luke, we come across words about Mary like in the previous chapter. She pondered these things in her heart. She didn't just take note, but she's involved. But she pondered in her heart. My sisters, I, I, can't, do you ever put yourself in Mary's place? Being a young girl, she was not quite grown, as we call grown. Being a young girl, being told by an angel, you shall conceive and have a child. Now, Mary had done what she was supposed to do and did not do what she was not supposed to do. And here an angel tells her she's about to have a child. Now, I have never been a woman, but even when I was a young preteen or tween or young teen, if an angel had told me, you're about to be a daddy, I might have fallen out and never woke up. <laughs> Mary, it was God's will, but God willed that Mary be 
brought to the edge of sanity. But God takes care of her. She ponders these things in her heart. Brothers and sisters, you ever ponder about life? There are some things you can have the answer to, but you keep on pondering it because sometimes the answer is not enough. Information is great. You can receive information in the top part of your brain. But when we deal with the real issues of life, when we are pushed to the edge of sanity, we need more than information. We need more than answers. We need that which speaks to our innermost being. That's why we, every year, we read the story again. Some of us gathered here today, no doubt, have heard the story over a hundred times read it just as many times, but there is still something to ponder in our hearts that God loves me so much that Jesus, the Son of God, is born into the world. Because you see, before his coming into the world, people did not have what we have now. Talking about the night of Christmas. You know, night comes before day. Even in the creation story, it reads, there was evening and there was day. When you look at your clocks, well, I don't wear a watch anymore, but when I look at my phone, the phone goes, went from Saturday, what was it yesterday, the 18th? Saturday, the 18th to Sunday, the 19th at midnight. First there is night, and then there is day. For the Hebrew people, the day begins with the evening, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., and then 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. However you mark off the time or the hours, nighttime comes before daytime. In general, the point I'm making really is what happens at night prepares you for the day. Oh, just in case I was unclear, how well do you perform in daytime if you did not sleep at night? <laughs> Also, what one does in the daytime is affected by what one saw at night. Take a look at Joseph. If Joseph only had what Joseph saw, would Joseph have kept Mary as his bride? But you see, one night, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and gave Joseph an understanding of the information he had on hand. And when Joseph understood what he was seeing with his eyes and in the daytime, Joseph decided to keep Mary as his fiancée, and Mary was with him in Bethlehem and the child is born in Bethlehem and Joseph along with Mary begins to nurture what God has given. What happens at night prepares us for the daytime. Hmm. 
not only in the Gospel of Luke, but in our lives. What visions we have, what dreams we have, prepares us for what we will do. You wonder, those of you who have a hard time motivating somebody to do what's best for them, why is it so hard to motivate some people to do what's best for them? I don't have the whole answer, but I have a part of an answer. It's not as hard when the person you're trying to motivate already has had a vision of who they are and who they are to be. Everybody has not had their vision as yet. You can talk to your blue in the face about what's good for somebody to do. But if it has not been shown to them by a power that is greater than you, when you quit talking, their mind is on something else. I believe I'm telling the truth. It is also true in life that the night before Christmas, in the night before Christmas, the shepherds were out in the field. They were doing their job. We have no information on what's on the shepherds' minds, who the shepherds were. We don't have their names. We don't have any information about what kind of lives they had lived except for the fact that they were shepherds in the fields keeping a watch over their flocks. It would be dark out there, somewhere outside of Bethlehem. And all of a sudden, there's an angel. Where did the angel come from? But not only is there an angel, there is the glory of the Lord shining all around them. Yes, they were afraid. If you tell the truth, you would have been afraid too. Nobody, I don't think anybody told them, you're going to see an angel tonight. But all of a sudden, the angel is there. And the angel says to them, fear not. Don't be afraid. I don't have bad news for you, I have good news for you. For behold, there is born in the city of David. They knew what the city of David was. They knew that was Bethlehem. In the city of David, there is born a savior. And I have good news of great joy for all the people. Church, that's what makes me happy about God. God is not just a God of one or two. God is not just a God who brings joy for this one and that one alone. God is not a God of the high and mighty alone. But God is a God who has good news of great joy for all the people. Oh, my brothers and sisters, yes, it is a special joy to the folk who are already saved, for the folk who already have Jesus in their lives, but it's not just for the folk who already have Jesus, it's for all the people. It's even for the people, oh, I know you love everybody, but it's even for the people I still need to learn how to love. <laughs> you know why I'm so glad about that? Because some of them will give you an awfully hard time and make life hard for you, and it might feel like you can't do nothing about it. But you know somebody who can. <laughs> Have mercy. <laughs> well, you see, the news is for all the people. The shepherds hear what the angel had to say, and then they hear and see a band of angels singing praises to God and glorifying God. 
And so they decide, well, let's go see this child. And they do. Seeing the child, they tell of what happened to them out in the night. As I said before, Mary ponders these things in her heart. But not only do they tell it in the manger, the Bible says that they told it abroad and spread the news abroad. Would, it, would I be stretching it to say that perhaps the shepherds were the first Christian preachers, the first Christian evangelist anyhow? So the night of Christmas, prepares us for the day. Yes, the day of Christmas. But the day of Christmas is not limited to this coming Saturday. The day of Christmas for a child of God is every day. Every day is a day that somebody ought to be able to meet a Christian, a believer, and encounter, not just John, not just Susan, not just you alone, but be able to encounter the Spirit of the Lord. For when, where there is the love of God, is there not the presence of God? Oh, that doesn't mean you need to have a sermon ready all the time. You don't need a sermon. As a matter of fact, the best sermons are not made with words anyhow. If the only preaching I can do is what I do standing behind one of these, I ain't much of a preacher. If the only preaching I can do is when I have a manuscript, I'm not much of a preacher. If the only preaching I can do is with words, I'm not much of a preacher. I tell you who was the best preacher I ever come across. The best preacher I ever come across were my grandparents. What my grandparents did wasn't what they wasn't the words that they gave me, but what I saw in their lives. I saw in their lives an example that made it easy for me to believe that Jesus is the Christ and that God has raised him from the dead. And if I will trust the Lord. There is good news of great joy. What happens on the night of Christmas ought to affect our whole lives. What happens on the night of Christmas is not limited to Bethlehem, but what happens on the night of Christmas continues in your heart and in your mind. If there is one who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, we extend an invitation on behalf of him. Won't you accept him? Won't you be baptized and join the church? Is there one today? Is there one? Perhaps there is someone who is being led by the Spirit of God to join the church by way of Christian experience. You are welcomed and you are invited. Is there one today? Is there one today? Brother Grace, if I sang, I, and I don't, <laughs> I might sing, only believe, only believe, all things are possible if you only believe. I wish you and everyone a Merry Christmas.
may we look to God for benediction. And now, Lord, I pray that as we leave the worship service, we are doing so not trying to get away from you, but seeking, Lord, to live our lives closer to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.